Instagram fam. What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm so excited. Like when I tell you I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I have not done Instagram live Bible study since 2019. So I'm super pumped and I think I'm going to do... Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. I think I'm going to do... Um, I think I'm going to do a Facebook Live, too, because not all of my friends are on Instagram, even though I'm like, y'all, come on, get on Instagram. It's where all the fun stuff happens, but they're still not there. So um, I think I'm going to do Facebook Live as well. Oopsies. What's what happening over here? Are getting, like I said, haven't done a Bible study on Instagram in... I think it's been like three months, literally. <clears throat> so getting back into the swing of things. But how's everybody doing? What's everybody up to? I keep having to remind myself that not every city is like on quarantine mode in Arlington slash Dallas slash Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, everything is shut down, like restaurants and stuff, only doing takeout. <clears throat> and then I came from like I moved from New Orleans <clears throat> and things there are shut down. So it's like a lot of the people that I know are in quarantine because those are the people that I'm, those are the cities that I'm most connected to. But someone told me that, I think Kansas City is not necessarily on quor full quarantine just yet, but they're like moving towards that, you know, I don't know. So, yes, going to go Facebook Live. <clears throat> I think that was all I was going to do. I think I was going to do Facebook Live and Instagram Live and leave it simple like that. This is cool. Hey, Britt. That's my sister. It's interesting how my hair looks on Instagram versus how my hair looks on Facebook. On Facebook, it's like, no, sis, what's happening here? But it's not about, not about all this. It's about the Bible study. So, I mean, mm, that's an interesting angle. Mm. Yeah, just going to make it happen. <sighs> hey, Jess. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, y'all. So, um, I was telling everybody that I was going to do... Facebook Live too, because I haven't, I don't think I've actually, I've never done a Facebook Live Bible study on my personal page. I've always done it on the Black Girls of Purpose page, but we just mixing it up today because I was telling people not everybody's home. It feels like everybody's home though, because like I'm home and the people on my feet are home. So I'm just like, so everybody's not home. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to get my Bible because it's Bible study. So I'm going to get my Bible and... We're coming out of a loop today. Gonna pray. I'm gonna introduce myself. We'll jump in. If you um, know anybody who you think would be benefit from Bible study, which everybody should benefit from Bible study, right? But if you know anybody who would like to watch, be sure to tag them or share. Um, you can use the little arrow. Hey, Jaleesa. You can use the little airplane icon and that'll share the Bible study with everybody. And like I said, we're going to be coming out of Luke 10. And if you didn't see on my story, um, we're doing... Today's Bible study is called This One Thing. So I'm going to go live on Facebook. I'm going to pray. I'm going to introduce myself. And we're going to jump in. Y'all, for real, for real. Like, I'm really excited because I know I've said it five times at this point. But I've not done a Bible study since 2014 2019 wow not 2014 okay 20 43 42 <clears throat> all right fro do what you're gonna do fro do what you're gonna do all right All right, 
I'm looking, making sure Facebook is working too. So I'll be looking up and down because I have Facebook here and I have Instagram up here. Okay, we're good to go. So I'm going to pray and we're going to get into the study. All right. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for continuing to mold us and shape us into who you created us to be. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to um, gather here with friends, Lord God, uh, people that I know, Lord God, people who I haven't talked to in a while, people who I talked to today, Lord God. I just thank you for this opportunity to uh, dive into your word together, Lord God. I just pray... Um, just in agreement with what your word says. Your word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear their prayers and I will heal their land. And our land definitely needs healing right now, Lord God. And so we just pray, Lord, even as we're in this time of Bible study, Lord, that you will speak to our hearts, Lord God. Um, and I just pray that whatever I share, Lord God, will be transformational, Lord God, and just lead people to have a deeper relationship with you and those who don't have a relationship with you, Lord God, that it will open up the, the door for them to have a relationship with you. So Lord, I love you. I thank you for this season that we're in. I thank you, Lord God, uh, that your word says the enemy is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, Lord. And I know that as I share um, this evening, Lord God, that you will speak to me. And so um, thank you for speaking to me and thank you for speaking to everybody in this community. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so for everybody watching, hello, my name is Brianna Lightfoot-Smith. I'm the founder and CEO of Black Girls of Purpose, a community creating offline and online spaces for women of color to connect. I actually started Black Girls of Purpose in 2016 after writing my book, The Black Girls Guide to Living on Purpose. And in that book, I share the different ways that people can people, women, because it's really for, I mean, it's called the Black Girls Guide to Living on Purpose, but I share in that book the way that anybody can live for God in every area of their life. And I share that because I dealt with suicidal thoughts as a teenager. And I tell people that one, that was because I didn't have the right community, but two, which was the deeper reason, is that I didn't have a right view of God, and I viewed God, even as someone who was born and raised in the church, I viewed God as this being that you saw on Sunday, and then you kind of just did your own thing throughout the rest of the week. And so, um, in treating him that way, I found myself struggling, and so... Fast forward, I was living in New Orleans and um, was working with teens in ministry, was writing this article called, it was something about self-love. And God said, hey, this is a book. And I was like, what? What you talking about? It's a book. And he said, yeah, it's a book. It's called, and I said, okay, if it's a book, what's it called? And he said, The Black Girl's Guide to Living on Purpose. And I said, that's where you're wrong because I'm not trying to be offending anybody. You know, it was right in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I just heard him say, if I'm giving it to you, it's going to be a success. And so I was like, okay, what's the book going to be about? And I tell people all the time, I've said it on podcast interviews, anybody who talks to me directly, God gave me all 15 chapters of the book, the outline, in that little five minute conversation that we had back and forth in my head. And so I was like, oh, he's really serious about this. And so I started writing the book. It took me about seven months to write. Uh, our church at the time had a business directory. And so I looked in that business directory and found an editor. That editor helped me. And within two months, the book was done, had uploaded it to Create Space, which is now Kindle Direct Publishing. My aunt told me to do, she, she said, oh man, this, you know, the book is good. You should do a workbook. So I did a workbook. She said, you should do workshops. I did workshops. And so after that, she said, you should, you, you know, you should come down here. And I said, you know, I don't feel comfortable going to Texas and doing workshops when I haven't even done workshops in the city where I live because I was living in New Orleans at the time. And so I hosted four workshops about goal setting, time management, and two other things. And uh, I invited people to come. Hey, my Lisa. I invited people to come to those workshops. And I was like, okay, if this is really supposed to be something, people will come. And it was initially intended to be for teens, but I had one teenage girl show up and three college women showed up. And the thing that stuck with me about the college women is that they came from three hours away. And so I said, okay, God, if people are driving from three hours away to talk to me, this girl that they do not know, this woman that they do not know, that they've never met about this book that they've never read, like maybe there's something to this. <clears throat> 
so sure enough you know they came i started getting invited places to speak blah 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 i was i say blah 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 because i that started going in my head i was like oh snap we out here i'm getting booked you know i got these this book i'm getting invited places to speak and god just really brought things to an abrupt halt because he said okay girl you have forgotten that this is first and foremost a ministry and so that was in 2017 so in 2017 God kind of just put a halt on things. And then it's ironic because it was only for a few months. Then we had our Black Girls of Purpose conference later on that year. And I was like, oh, snaps. Okay. So we did the conference. Um, I met my mentee who I literally just talked to today, was texting before I got on here for the Bible study. And um, really the rest is history. Like we started doing monthly events. We launched a podcast 2018 and... Um, yeah, I mean, when we moved to Texas, we made a pivot to focus on black millennial women um, and really women of faith who have businesses or the in an interest in starting businesses. And then I serve, started serving teens through my nonprofit Unity Queens. So all of that's backstory for me in case you have no idea who I am, you never met me um or you know you've heard about these bible studies and and that's another thing that's changed is that normally i host these bible studies on the black girls of purpose page but i felt led to start hosting it on my personal page um and so that's why i did that and if you know anybody who's like hey you know what happened to the bible studies let them know it's on the black girl of purpose page and not black girls of purpose so that's a little bit about me the history of black girls of purpose um i always like to shout out my husband before i start my bible studies because he watches our boys in the room or wherever sometimes i'll take them to my parents house while i do the bible study so i can really be focused in uh, but you might hear them in the background so just be advised about that um so tell me a little bit about y'all i mean i know that's what's so amazing i know everyone who has tuned in so far um so i know where people are watching from but i always like to give everybody the opportunity to just communicate with each other and then i shared this at the beginning but if you want to share this bible study with anybody all you all you have to do is click the little um airplane icon and this is on instagram and then on facebook i'm not really sure how you share on facebook because it's my first time doing a Facebook Live on my personal page. Um, but yeah, y'all can share who y'all are and then we'll jump into the Bible studies for this week. And if you missed it earlier, we're in Luke chapter 10 and we're going to be reading verse 39 through 41. Thirty. Hey Whitney. All right, y'all. Well, I'll just go ahead and jump in then if we are good to go. So uh, I said I'm going to be reading Luke chapter 10, verses 39 through 41. And today's title, if you, in case you missed it, is this one thing. And so the scripture says, She had a sister named Mary who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. And the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice, and it will not be taken from her. So whenever I talk to Renelle, hey boo, whenever I talk to women in our Black Girls of Purpose community, and honestly just people I'm friends with, one of the very common themes, hey Miss Darlene, that comes up seems to be this sense of being overwhelmed, right? Overwhelmed or confused or feeling like you have to do all the things. And I feel like many of us struggle to understand what it is that we're supposed to be doing right and it's so interesting and i know god's intentional about having this study be tonight because some of us are finding ourselves in a place where we're quarantined we're having to stay at the house uh i saw my lisa i saw that you went to the gym today but some of us like the gyms are closed restaurants are closed we're not going anywhere and so we have a unique opportunity to 
really reset, refocus and say, okay, what is it that matters to me? What's really important to me? And so I think that we're, we're being positioned to do something different because a lot of us, and I, like I, I said, I can say it boldly because of the women that I know personally, that I have conversations with all the time, we're so used to the hustle and the bustle that we never slow down to say, to really assess like, what is it that I'm doing? Why is it that I'm doing it? And I know that I get caught up in this. I won't say often, thank God, I've come a long way because it used to be that I used I would get caught up in it often where I was going so fast that it's like, okay, God, I know you're trying to talk to me, but I got this like hustle and grind that I'm trying to do. And so maybe we'll get catch up later. But if we don't, like you understand, like I got stuff to do, not realizing that even the things that I have to do are the things that he has given me. And so I think the reason why we justify it is that a lot of people say, you know, things like, oh, it's going to work itself out in the end. Or everything's going to happen, you know, the way it's supposed to. And while that is true, I also understand that you have to be intentional in the things that happen to you. Right. So I'll give you an example. Earlier this week, I was at the prayer room because I serve at the prayer room here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And uh, you'll be happy to know they are following guidelines. They, they're not having more than 10 people in the prayer room at a time. But I was sitting at the desk because I'm an usher. And so the usher sit at the desk when people come in. And I was like, God, you know, our conversations have been feeling kind of dry like the past couple of days. Like, I don't know. It just, it just not really like the goodness that I'm used to. And, um... I felt like he was like, well, ask me why. And so I said, so why? And I felt like what he was telling me, he said, you know, you've been selfish. That's what I thought he was telling me, right? I was like, oh man, I've been selfish. And so I start thinking about these different things. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't do that. I didn't do this. Oh my gosh, you're so right. I'm selfish. And then later, God showed me, he said, Brie, I'm not an accuser. The enemy is an accuser. So I don't use phrases like you're selfish. My word will say things like, Look out not only for your own needs, but also for the needs of others. But uh, that's an accusatory statement to say you're selfish. God doesn't use those kinds of phrases with this. We might say that to ourselves, but he doesn't say that. So he's like, that wasn't me talking to you. I'm not telling you that you're selfish. So that was cool. But I was like, okay, God, cool. Glad to know I'm not selfish. But there still seems to be a little something off here. And so then I did feel Holy Spirit say, okay, the, the thing is, he's like, we've been having a lot of group dates but we haven't had any one-on-one -on -one time. And for any of y'all who are in a relationship or you've been in a relationship before, especially if you're somebody who your love language is quality time, you know if all of your conversations are happening within the context of a group, it's not really the same. Like there's some certain things you just wanna share with your boo. It's like, well, I would tell you this, but we're in this big old group setting, and so I'm going to wait until it's me and you one-on-one, -on -one and we'll talk about it. And so I felt like that's what Holy Spirit was saying me, saying to me. He's like, I love that you have all these prayer calls that you're on. I love that you are, you know, communicating these different things. I love that you love fasting and doing all that. That's fine, but those things are things that you're doing publicly, and I need to make sure that me and you are good privately. And so I was like, okay, I get that. I said, so, okay, God. I treat like I like I would if my husband said we need to spend some time. I said, okay, God, we're going to have some one-on-one -on -one time. It's going to be me and you, and it's going to be good, and I'm, we're going to almost set it up, and it's going to be fine. And I have a prayer closet here at our house, and so I was like, me, you, prayer closet tomorrow. It's a date. And so this morning, went into my prayer closet, and I was excited. It, I literally felt like... You know, like I had been getting ready for a date with my with my husband. I'm like, okay, yes, we know. he. We set a time. We met together. And so I, I went in the closet and I sat and I was like, okay, God, like talk to me. What do you want to say? I'm ready to listen. Just talk to me. And he brought up this scripture. But the interesting thing is that he brought the scripture up earlier this week, but I was going so fast that I didn't have a chance to really process what it was saying. And so when I finally sat down, I said, okay, God, speak to me. He brought me back to the scripture and he said, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is necessary. And when I tell y'all that, of course, we know, so a little bit of background for the scripture, we know that Martha and Mary, they're sisters. And so Martha is, you know, the person that's like, she's she's really on the more of the hospitality side. Jesus comes and she's like, oh my gosh, got to get everything ready. Hey, Tiffany. She's like, I got to get everything ready. Got to get stuff cute. Like, okay, Jesus is here. Got to 
fix up the food, got to do this, got to do that. And so she's fixing all this stuff up. And then she stops and she's like, hold up. My sister Mary is not even helping me. And so she thinks she's doing something. And she tells Jesus like, oh, Jesus, can you tell my sister to help me? Because I'm over here. I'm cooking up your favorite food. And, you know, I'm sweeping. I'm making sure everything is good. And she just over here sitting at your feet. And like, no, that's not going to work for me. And so Jesus tells her, he says, okay. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried about many things. And he said, he says you're distracted too, depending on what translation you read. He said, you're distracted by many things. He said, but only one thing is necessary. Martha has chosen, or Mary has chosen what is good and it will not be taken away from her. Now we know the one thing that Jesus is talking about is himself. He's saying, Hey, your sister gets it. She understands if everything hits the fan and the only thing she has is her relationship with me. She's good. He said, you're focused on all this other stuff. Now, what God was telling me beyond spending time with him, I had all these. The reason why I was overwhelmed is because I had all these projects in my head. And I know y'all have seen the posts that are like, hey, while you quarantine and you need to lose 20 pounds, write your book, launch your blog, go natural, launch the podcast, uh, start tweezing your eyebrows, do it. And it's like, oh, okay. And, you know, we're like, okay, yeah, you're so right. This is a great time to get ahead on all the work that I've been missing, da, 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 da. But then... Two days in, you're overwhelmed, and you're wondering, like, well, shoot, you know, it's two days in. I'm supposed to be losing 20 pounds. Hey, Ish. Hey, everybody. I love seeing y'all. Come on. And we're like, okay, so wait. So run that from the top again. What am I supposed to be doing with this two weeks of quarantine? You said I need to write the book, launch the blog, lose 20 pounds, go natural, launch the podcast. I need to squeeze my eyebrows. I need to, and it's like, no, you just, you, no, you're not going to do all those things, okay? So, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, I just want you to know, if that was your expectation with these two weeks, three weeks, even if it's eight weeks of quarantine, you like, okay, you're going to transformation, it's just going to be a whole transformation of your whole life, I'm going to encourage you to not try to be a master of many things. I'm going to encourage you to try and be a master of one thing. Because at the end of the day, if you choose one goal, one thing to focus on over the course of the next two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks, and you work at that thing consistently every single day, you're going to be more happy with the results that you get than if you try to do all the things. And so you might lose one pound and write one blog post. And then, you know, you write the outline for the book. And so your mind is scared. And so God was showing me, he said, Bree, I've been trying to get this one-on-one -on -one time with you because I was trying to tell you, you have all these things on your dashboard. I use Trello to manage my projects. He's like, you have all these things on your dashboard and that's cute and that's fine. But here's the one assignment that I'm telling you to do. Just this one thing. And so I was like, oh, you just want me to, just this one, just the one thing? He's like, yes, just the one thing. And what I realized, I said, okay, God, why is it that I switch projects and ideas so quickly, right? And, you know, sometimes we say, oh, well, I'm just a creative. I'm a creative, and so that's why, you know, I switch ideas because I just have all these ideas. Okay, it's fine to have ideas. That's great. That's fine. And people know, like, literally... I love doing mind maps. And if you don't know what a mind map is, I think you could probably Google it and, and it'll come up. But I love doing mind maps. This is a mind map. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, it talks about things I want to focus on. Now see that? Look how, look how much of a hot mess this is, y'all. This is things I want to focus on. Do you see all these different things? Do you see why my mind was going crazy? And I didn't even realize that that was why my mind was going crazy because this is what I said I want... This is what I want to focus on, but it's a jillion things. And so it goes back to you can be a, you want to be a, a jack of all trades and a master of none. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to be a master of one thing. If I leave out of this season, this quarantine, this month, this year, having accomplished this one thing, then I would be happier than, uh, to do that than to say, okay, I started a jillion projects. And I didn't finish any of them. And now how many of y'all, by show of hands, be honest, you have started a jillion things, but you look at it and you're like, dang, I still ain't finished that painting. I was supposed to start locking up her hair. I did the front, but not the back. Like I start, I was supposed to declutter that closet. I got to the shoes, but then when I started looking at the dresses that I need to give away, I was like, yeah, no, 
I'm not going to be able to do it. Aisha raised her hand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. And I'll be real, too. I mean, even the closet thing. I was like, I'm going to declutter my closet and I'm going to do my... Sis. So what I said, I said, okay, I'm just going to work on my closet. And you know what happened? I worked on my closet and I finished that thing. I finished it. It was amazing. I started and I finished. But even y'all, and I know people are like this because we're all, we're very similar. I will start cleaning a room and then I'll move to another room to like bring, you know, like you think about a, a kitchen, right? You think about you're in your bedroom, you have a cup in your bedroom. So you go to the kitchen to put the cup in the kitchen and then you start cleaning the kitchen. So then you have cleaned the kitchen. You go up to the room. And you're like, dang, this room's still dirty. Why is this room still dirty? Because you didn't finish cleaning it. Because you started working on the kitchen instead of saying, I'm focused on the bedroom. I know the kitchen's dirty right now. But I'm focused on the bedroom. That's what my focus is going to be. And so we have to do that with everything. Whether it's a business. Whether it's a blog. Whether it's a podcast. Whether it's your hair. Like... If you focus on one thing, you'll be surprised at how much peace you have. And so you might be saying, okay, Brie, that's cool. I get it now. I need to focus on one thing. But how do I determine what that one thing is? I'm so glad you asked me. Because you can do it with three steps. First, you have to slow, do slow down. First, you have to slow down. Second, you have to seek God. And then third, you have to be obedient. So I'll say that again. If you want to determine what your one thing is, first, you have to slow down. Second, you have to seek God. And third, you have to be obedient. Now, first, you have to slow down. That comes directly out of the scripture in 39, uh, verse 39 for Luke 10. It says, she had a sister named Mary who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. You can't listen to someone if you're running. You can kind of hear them, like you know they're talking, but you're not really paying attention. If you're running back and forth, they're like, hey, Brit can hey, Brittany, can I, hey, just, I'm, you know, they're like, <laughs> they're trying to get your attention, but you're not slowing down to listen to them. And so God is trying to give you instructions. He's trying to tell you what to do in this season, but you're moving so fast that he can't hear you or you can't hear him. He's like, Aisha, I just want to. Hey, uh, Tiffany, I get you. Darlene, I just want to. And you know the thing, like what I love about God, he is a gentleman. So where, where some of us will be like, stop, you know, slapping, you know, it, it like, and I know there's so many of y'all on here who have sisters. So if your sister is continuing to ignore you, can you be like, uh, girl, can you pay attention? I'm talking to you. And sometimes, I mean, God will do that if it gets too critical, but most times he's like, okay. You too busy? Okay. I'll be here. You know, I really, I really want to tell you this thing. You've been asking. You're asking everybody else what you should be doing. I have the answer, but you won't slow down and listen to me. So, okay. I'll, I'll be here. And so then it becomes, hey, um, Jessica, uh, can I get a moment of your time? You're like, yeah, Lord. Uh, hold on. Let me just go do this real quick. And then we're going to talk, okay? And he's like, okay. And a day passes, and a week passes, and a month passes, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know what I should be doing, Lord, what should I be doing? And he's like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm so glad you asked me, I'm going to tell you. And before he can even get out one word, you're like, oh sorry, no, I didn't, I mean, I know I said like, Lord, what should I be doing, but I was just kind of saying that like metaphorically, I don't really have time to talk right now. That's what we do to God so often and it's me too like and that's what one thing I love about this house when I when we moved in I always said I wanted a prayer room since I watched the the war room movie I was like oh yes I want a prayer closet one day da, 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 da. and in our old house in New Orleans I had kind of like a prayer corner corner and Miss Darlene knows this because she like, like built this desk center in our house and so I would put my prayers in there, but the way I had the room set up, it's like I could see them, but I couldn't really see them. So then I ended up just moving my prayers to the side of the wall where my, like, to the wall where my bed was. I just moved them right there. So when I woke up, I would see them. But when we moved into this house, I got a prayer room. I was so excited. It's underneath our, our stairs. And so, you know, 
it's um, I love meeting with God there. He truly meets me there when I sit there and I spend time with him. But there will be sometimes a couple days where I walk past that thing and I'm like, dang, when's the last time I sat in there? Like, is it still a prayer closet or is it just a storage closet? And you think about the place where you meet with God and you really have to ask yourself, like, when's the last time I slowed down and just sat with God in my in our space? Whatever that space is. For some people, I know for Destiny, and when I was talking to her earlier, it's your car. It's like, when's the last time you just sat in your car? And for some of us who are quarantined, you're like, well, I can't sit in my car because, you know, we're not going anywhere. Okay, just go sit in your car in the garage or in the driveway. Just sit in your car and be like, hey, God, you know, I know I'm not really driving anywhere right now, but like... I know this is still our spot, so I figured we could meet up. So what's up? You know, just tell me what's going on with you. Because more, you know, so many people are like, oh my gosh, you know, I want to hear from God. I want to hear from God. And it's like, but are you, have you slowed down long enough to listen to him? Or are you just, like, do you really want to hear from God? Because here's the, here's the next part. I said we have to so, slow down, but we also have to seek God. That's the second step. If you want to know what your one thing should be in this season, you have to seek God. And scripture talks about how if we seek God, we will find him if we search for him with all of our heart. Listen to that all of our heart part. If we search for him with all of our heart. Now, why do I bring that up? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm saying that because God just kind of just took me a whole nother uh, direction. But a few weeks ago, I actually went into the hospital. Um due to stress didn't know that it was stress but I, I was feeling things physically and so i was like oh man i feel you know really bad Felt like i was gonna pass out didn't feel like i was having a heart attack because the chain was uh, the pain in my chest was on my right side and i know my heart's on my left side so it's like okay it's not my heart but something is off and so in it anyway ended up going to the emergency room they checked me out uh everything came back fine but they said follow up with the doctor so i'm sitting up i'm sitting in the doctor's office um, they put me on a heart monitor. They tell me, come back the next week. So the next week, I'm sitting in the office. I look at this poster, and it has the, the, the sign. It says, like, nine signs for heart disease. And when I tell y'all, I had, like, every sign. It was, like, fatigue, you know, slowness of breath, da, 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 da. I had eight out of the nine signs. So this is as I'm waiting for the doctor to come back and tell me, like, what's going on with me. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. I didn't give it too much thought because I'm still a, ch a child of God. And even if they said, hey, this is what we found. I'm like, okay, well, this is what God says about me. But anyway, he comes back in. He says, hey, your heart's fine. I really think it's just stress. And so as I was sitting there, what God was saying to me, he said, Bree, you don't have physical heart disease, but you have spiritual heart disease. And I'm like, spiritual heart disease? I mean, I don't really know what you're talking about, God. Like... I just, I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel, again, because I'd been going, 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 I hadn't really had time to sit and think about how I'd been feeling. And he said, you have spiritual heart disease. He, and he brought me to Proverbs 13, 12, which says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And so he said, Bree, there are promises that I have given you that you are waiting on still, that you, your heart is broken. Your heart is sick about those things. And you haven't told me that your heart is sick because you're like, oh, you know, it's fine. You say the things. I know the plans God has for me, plans to prosper me, not to harm me, plans to give me hope in the future. You say that with your mouth, but you don't believe it in your heart. And so because you don't believe it in your heart, you're dealing with spiritual heart disease. And I say that because even when I think about the scripture that says we should love God with all our heart and all our mind and all our strength, we can't love God with all our heart if our heart is devoted to something else. Scripture says that you can't serve God and money. And a lot of us, we can't love God with all our heart because our heart is sold out to money. And you like, girl, uh -uh, my heart is sold out to Jesus. But me and my friend Jess, who's on here, we talk about all the time. It's like, I see why God says you can't serve both God and money because I don't want to have to check my bank account when God tells me to do something. But often that's what happens. If he's like, go give to that person. I'm like, okay, well, just let me just log in the chase real quick just to make sure. Let me log in the chase and see what. So he's like, okay, so who's your God? Me or Chase? Me or Bank of America? Hey, Rachel. He's like, who's your God? Who are you committed to? Who has your heart? 
And if you guys have been watching the Transformation Church uh, Secure the Bag series that they've been doing over the past few weeks, they talk about the importance of tithing and giving God your first 10% because he's like, okay, that shows where your heart is. That shows where your trust is. That shows where your faith is. Wherever you, Whatever you give to, that shows where you're, wh what you're believing in. And it's not just from a monetary standpoint. What do you get all of your time worrying about money? If so, then you're, you, you are devoted to money. Money has your heart. And so God wants to talk to you, but money's in the way. Or God wants to talk to you, but your husband's in the way. Because honestly, literally that scripture that talks about it being better for you to be single because you can serve God, it's a real thing. Now trust me, I love my boo. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy to be married. But there are diff definitely days where I want to spend time with God and Jordan's like, hey girl. And I'm like, can I go spend time with Jesus, please? But then I'm like, well, Lord, you know. I mean, he right there, and I don't want to, like, not be with him, but, like, I don't know, like, what you, you know, and I'm, like, conflicted in my mind, like, well, what should I be doing? Should I spend time with my husband? Should I spend time with God? I don't know. And so, you really have to say, like, who has your heart? I'm just being real, Aisha. I'm just saying, like, listen, I'm going to be real. Y'all may not be real, but I'm going to be, I'm y'all already, know. for those of y'all who know me, which most of y'all know me, I'm going to just say how it is. So, I'm like, okay. I see why he says you have to love God with all your heart. And that's why, and you can't seek him again. That going back to the scripture I said before, he says, if you seek me, you will find me. If you search for me with all your heart, I know the difference. I love you too. I love you too. I love you too, Shakira. I know the difference of really seeking God and kind of like halfway seeking God, because I'll be real. There are days where I'm like, God, I don't want to talk about this right now because, uh, you might tell me something I'm not trying to hear. So you kind of like halfway pray like, Lord, if it's in your will, and then you kind of just leave off. Because <laughs> you don't even really want to know what's in his will. You just like, I mean, God. Uh... Or you do come into prayer expecting God to speak to you and wanting to hear from him. But you're so distracted because of the other things that have your heart that you can't even stay focused on praying. You start praying. You're like, Lord, God, thank you for this day. Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to come before you and pray. Oh, my gosh. Wait, I need to get the groceries and then I need to. Uh, oh, Father God. Uh, um, what was I saying? And so it's like, how can he? He's like, you can't really seek me because you're not seeking me with all your heart. And I have all the knowledge I have. I have it. I like literally I've laid out the plan. I'm telling you what I want you to do. But you don't you don't hear me because your ears are clogged. Your heart is clogged with all this other stuff. And you think about heart disease. It's like, OK, well, you know, it's clogged and, you know, the arteries are clogged. Our arteries are clogged with the wrong things. And I, I told so many people, I said this coronavirus situation is for Christians. I firmly believe God's like, okay, because scripture says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and I will hear their prayers and heal their land. He's like, okay, y'all, I tried to give y'all an opportunity to choose me willingly. Y'all did not. So everything is closed. We're done. Like, oh, you can't spend time with me because the game is on. There is no game. Oh, you can't spend time with me because you and your boo have a date night at the restaurant. Guess what? The restaurant is closed. Oh, you was going to go to the movies? No, there are no movies. Like, it's literally, it's just, I mean, it's just, he's like, how? And it, and it, hurt, it hurts me that he's like, okay, I don't want, it's, it's like being a parent. You don't want to take all the things away for your children to spend time with you. You just want them to spend time with you. You don't want to have to be like, okay, I'm going to take your... I was about to say Game Boy. That's aging myself. Uh, not that I'm just out here. I mean, I'm 29. <laughs> well, I'll be 29 in May. But anyway, it's like you don't want to be like, oh, let me take your Game Boy and let me take this and let me take that and then you're going to spend time with me. You just want them to spend time with you. I would tell y'all this morning, when I tell you my son, he came down and my sister knows this. He came downstairs and he just... He said, good morning, mommy. And I was like, good morning. And he said, how's your day? And I was like, I ain't having a good day. How was your day? Now, mind you, at that point, it's eight. But it had already been a magnificent morning because I was spending time with God. And he finally gave me all these things that I've been searching for and didn't even realize. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, Jess, that's how old I am. Like, So anyway, I'm, he, God had given me this amazing download. So it had been a great day. But I love that my son just came and just wanted to spend time with me. Because usually what comes is he comes downstairs 
and, and he, I've, I've really gotten him good at saying good morning, but it used to be he comes downstairs and he's like, snack. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, bro. Good morning. Hello. How are you? But we treat God the same way. He wakes us up. We don't tell him good morning. And then we go about our day. And then when we in a place where we like struggling, we like, oh, Lord, uh, get that traffic. Hold up. Can you, uh, Lord, I'm about to be late for work. Can you, get, can you remove the traffic? And he's like, oh, good morning. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you. Haven't talked to you since last night. Oh, wait, no, you didn't pray to me last night either because you was busy or you started praying and then you fell asleep. Like, so, you know, we don't like when people treat us like that, but that's how we treat God. Even if you don't have children, when people just walk up in there, you know, if you worked in retail or if you worked in food and people are like, uh, water, water. And you're like, hello, I'm a person. How are you? And I know my sister has said she's done that before where she's like, or she'll lay food. She, when she used to work in restaurants, she'd lay food at people's table and they'd be like, and they wouldn't say anything. She's like, oh, you're welcome. And that's how we treat God. First, we are demanding. Then when he does stuff for us, we don't even acknowledge it. And he's like, no, it's no problem. Yeah, you're welcome. Saved you from, you know, those plagues today, but it's fine. Good night. Hey, Chip Chat. He's like, no, yeah, no, it's fine. No, 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 don't worry about me. Don't say good morning or anything. Just, it's fine. Don't, don't worry about it. But we don't want to seek God. I feel like one, because we're too distracted, which that's the whole thing we're talking about here in Luke 10, is that, but, but Martha was distracted by her many tasks and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me? So one, we're too distracted. But two, even when we're not distracted, we're like, okay, but like, I don't really want to hear what you got to say. So, you know, you start, like I said, you start the prayer like, most holy father, precious, uh, you know, and then you just drift off. And then you're like, oh, Lord, sorry, I'm running late for work. Catch you tomorrow, maybe? And he, but he is good. And so he's like, okay, I'll be here. And he covers you through your entire day, allows no hurt or harm to come to you. Or even if it does come to you, he shows you he's with you in it. But you still don't want to spend time with him. You don't want to seek him. And then you're worried about things. And he's trying to give you the solution, but you're moving too fast. You're distracted by your many tasks. And so the very solution that you're wanting is right here. There it is. And he, and, and that's what, I, like, y'all, scripture says in James, it says, if you seek God, if you ask him for wisdom, he will give it willingly and without reproach. He's not asking you to, to jump through a bunch of hoops. He's just asking you to be still for a second. And like I said, he's been asking us as the church, as people of God, we haven't listened. And so he's like, okay. He's like, okay, I, I wanted to spend time with you. I wanted to invite you into my presence, but I guess I'm just going to have to shut everything down. And the unfortunate thing is that even in this season, not every, still people are, not everybody is going to spend time. Still, people are going to go to distractions. They're like, oh, yes, I get to catch up on my shows. Y'all, I'm not saying Netflix is bad. I'm not saying, because trust and believe, I have watched, man, I caught up on, like, I've just caught up to so many movies. I watched Black Panther again this week. I finally watched Avengers Endgame, which has been out for, like, a year, and it was so good. And I was like, wow, I see why people like this. So that's not, but it, it's like, okay, but what, why are you going to those things? And when are you going to those things? Are, is that how you're starting your day? Are you starting your day with the news? Or are you starting your day with the father? The one who already knows all the news. Because if you start with the news, then you go into your day with overwhelm. Oh Lord, they saying that, they saying coronavirus is in another place and they shut down another school. And, you, and God's like, I already know that. Why are you giving me the news report? I already know that. I'm trying to tell you how to navigate in this space, but you over here like, okay, so we need to get toilet paper. And I, you know, and even that, like, if we would see God, we would see how silly some of the stuff we're doing, some of the ways we're looking to deal with this. He's like, okay, so toilet paper. That's your solution to coronavirus is toilet paper. Okay. All right. I, I had something different. Not really sure where you're going with that, but, uh, okay, you do what you think is best. And he, as I said in the beginning, he's a gentleman. So he's just like, 
that ain't, you know, he's sitting up there like, that's not it. I don't know why they're doing it. I'm not sure why they're doing that. They're supposed to be giving to each other. They're hoarding everything. So, okay, but, uh, and he just watches it play out. And he's like, oh, okay, um, okay, I don't, I don't know. I'm not really sure why they did that. But, uh, yeah, okay. It, but every, y'all, every day, every second is an invitation for you to interact with God. I told you y'all was going to hear my, my children in the background, probably. Um, every second. And I, I heard this quote years ago, and it says, you get a second chance every second. And I love that because sometimes we're like, okay, God, like even how I said, I was like, okay, God, we're going to have our date tomorrow. And I was glad that we we're going to have our date. But sometimes God is like, no, what are you doing right now? Drop what you're doing right now. Just come spend some time with me. Like some of y'all, when you get off of this Bible study, God's going to say, okay, now, can I talk to you now? Do I have your attention? Or are you just going to go from that Bible study right back to the regular Instagram feed and scroll and, you know, like, what do you do? Like, how badly do you want to hear from God? And I think that's the part that we have to, we have to be honest about. If you really don't want to hear from God, he's like, okay. Because that's why he says, seek me with all your heart. He, but, but when you seek him and you're genuine about it, when I tell you, like, because y'all, as blocked as I was feeling with God earlier this week, and I was like, oh man, you know, we just not like really here not really here today it was just an overflow where i was like oh this is so good i can't even you know i have enough notebooks to write all the things and i'm just like okay god yes this is great and that came from slowing down it came from seeking god but here's the last part y'all i talked about how how do we determine what our one thing is and for y'all who are just joining we're coming out of luke 10 we're reading verses 39 through 42 or read verses 39 through 42 and i'll reread that just so y'all have the context but it says she had a sister named mary who also sat at the lord's feet and was listening to what he said but martha was distracted by her many tasks and she came up and asked lord don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone so tell her to give me a hand and the lord answered her martha Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken from her. So I was asking, how do you find that one thing? Because so many people in our community are overwhelmed or overworked or they're, they're just like, I don't know what to do and I don't want to make the wrong decision. And the answer is you slow down, you seek God. But the major, this is the major part. Because if you slow down and you seek God, but you're not obedient, that's the last part is you have to be obedient to what he says. If you slow down and you seek God, you ask God, what is it that you want me to do? But you don't obey it, then you just wasted his time. What is the point? What, why? Like, why am I even sitting down here with you? I'm trying to tell you what to do. And you're like, okay, God, thanks. And you still go and do your own thing. That is foolish. Scripture says in James, and y'all know I'm not going to misquote the word. So let me get up in here real quick. Scripture says in James, it talks about being doers of the word and not hearers only. And scripture says, um, and I, I do, Sometimes God be putting stuff in the Bible. You're like, okay, you didn't have to put it like that. I mean, wow, that was a little bit rude. But it says, um, yes, it says, this is verse 23. So James 1, verse 23. And it says, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but one who does good works, this person will be blessed in what he does. This person will be blessed in what he does. That's where the blessing comes. You can seek God. You, you can slow down. You can seek God. But if you don't obey what he says, then you wasted his time. You wasted your time. And you're going to just start the cycle over again. And so you're going to say, oh, Lord, I'm overwhelmed. And honestly, what happens is he's like, okay. He's like, I'm not really trying to hear. You know, I'm not really trying to hear that because I told you how to not be overwhelmed. And you chose to not listen to that. So... I don't really know what you want me to do at this point because you want some, you, he's like, you're not really looking, you're not talking to me for me to give you direction. You just want me to rubber stamp what you're doing already. So you're like, Lord, I'm out here. I'm hustling. I'm grinding. I'm doing the things. And he's like, I told you to rest. That's what I want you to do in this season, but you're still working. And so until you stop working, I won't bless your finances. I will Shakira. He's like, you want me to, okay. Like, 
And when I say working, I'm not even just talking from the standpoint of you have a job, but he's like, no, you're, 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 you are hustling and grinding and you don't spend time with me. And so until you have prioritized me above everything else, I'm not giving you anything. I can't entrust you with the small task of spending time with me. So why would I give you things that are going to distract you even more from me? Why would I do that? You want a new job. You don't spend time with me with this old job. Why would I give you a new job? You want higher pay. You don't tithe with the money that I gave you from the job that you're saying. Again, you're saying you need a new job with bigger pay, but you don't tithe with the money from the smaller paid job. Why would I give you another job? Why would I give you more money? You want more children. You don't treat the children you have with love and respect, but you feel like, oh, well, it's, he's a boy. If I had girls, I would be different. What kind of father would God be if he sees that you're not using what you have properly and he says, I'm going to give her some more. I'm going to give him another one. I know that she crashed the car, but you know, and, and understand grace does exist, but God is not foolish. You have to understand there's a difference between grace and foolishness. Like if you crash your car, it was, you know, it's not your fault. Okay. But he's like, no, you have a focus issue. So you crashed your car because you were texting and driving because you were hustling and grinding and you were telling the people you were going to be late. And if you had spent time with me in the morning, then I would have told you, okay, now you need to do this. Okay, your daughter's about to get up. Okay, you need to do the breakfast. Okay, now leave. Okay, turn left at this light. If you had been listening to me, you wouldn't have crashed into the... I'm just saying. And so we ask God for things that would compete. God, and, I, and I feel like, and I don't know if this was Pastor Chip or somebody else or a book I read. It's like God is never going to bless you in an area that is a competition for him. And some of y'all know, like, God had me step away from work because he was like, you think you're your own provider. And so how about this? How about you come on home? So you understand that I don't need your help providing for your needs. How about that? How, you know, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. How about you don't do like you, you, you think you think you got this, uh, you know, this, this image and you out here, you know, how about this? How about I'm gonna close all the stuff? How about all the speak, the, 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 the speaking gigs and stuff? Yeah, those are canceled. That's where people are right now. God's like, oh, oh, oh. So it's the $10,000 gig that was gonna pay your bills. Okay. Cancel. Now let's see. Let's see if those, if those lights still come on. Let's see if those lights are still on. Oh, wow, your electric bill is still due even though I canceled all your speaking engagements. Hmm, how did that happen? Oh, Warner Brothers ain't even, but your bills are still being paid. Hmm. And like, you have to understand God, when he says he is a jealous God, and when he says you shall have no other God before him, he's not playing with you. And I, this, like, I'm telling y'all, from day one, I was like, God is getting our attention. This is not about, this is an opportunity for us as a church to shine our lights. But God is like, okay, this is kind of like one of them, okay, you need to send your friends home because me and you need to have a conversation. And, 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 you know, you, you, your mom would be putting on the corporate voice. Oh, hey, Susie, we so glad that you came over, girl. Tell your mom we would love for you to come back next week. Um, but we do need you to go ahead and, you know, you and, you know, you and Bree can talk later. Or you on the phone and she's like, she's making that eye like, get off the phone. Get off of the phone. And you're like, oh, yeah, girl. Um, yeah, I'm going to call you back. And you don't want to get off the phone because you don't know what your mom is going to say. But then you get off the phone and she's like, you know what, girl? I, now, I want to embarrass you in front of your little friends, but here's what's really happening. And that's what God is saying. He's like, I'm not trying to embarrass you in front of your little friends, but y'all have been operating as if I'm not here. And so I need you to understand that I am here and I'm not playing with y'all. And so, as I said before, everything is closed. This is your one thing. This is an opportunity for us as the church to say, hey, God. Sorry you had to have a whole do that to get our attention, but you have our attention now. What would you like to say? And then we don't just seek him and we don't just we don't just slow down and say, God, what do you want to say? We don't just seek him and say, OK, God, I'm listening, but we actually do it. So if he says, 
cut this off. Stop being with that person. Stop sleeping with this person. Stop spending your money here. Where we say, okay, I that didn't want to hear that. That didn't feel good. But okay, you have my attention, God. And this will be a time wasted if we do not spend our, if we do not say, you know what? Hey God, I surrender. You have my attention. Okay. Like what are you, if you leave this time, this season, the same way you came in, then you just wasted God's time. You just wasted like a whole Noah's Ark experience. That's foolish. I can't, I can't get with that. I'm sorry. I just can't get with it. And so I really want y'all to think about that. Like, how, what ways do you need to slow down? Which, hey, he's helping you out there already. Some people had the two hour commute. He's like, yeah, you can just work from home now. So that's not in the way anymore. Even with children. Listen, I had to surrender my children to God a long time ago because I was like, Lord, I wasn't even trying to be a mama yet. So here, these are your children. You figure it out. And there will be mornings where I'll be in my prayer closet and one of my children will wake up and I'll say, uh-uh, God, this is our time. And you know, if I don't get my time with you, I'm going to be crazy. So I'm going to need you to do something with these children. And they will go back to sleep and I, it'll be silent all of a sudden. So you surrender your, because because God, don't, that's another thing, y'all. God don't need your help raising your children. Yes, you need to be a good steward. Yes, you need to take care of them. But even if you're not here, guess what, boo? He's still going to take care of them. He will still provide for them. If he took you today, your children will not miss a meal because you're gone. And for some of y'all, you're like, what? I'm like, I can't believe you said that. He needs you to understand the world does not revolve around you. Some of y'all are going to be shocked when you get back to your workplace and everything is normal because you're like, well, I've, I've been working remotely. What? Okay. We don't need your position. God put you in that position and he can take it like the Lord give it the Lord, take it away like you. I'm telling y'all, he's trying to talk. Not, not even he's trying. He is talking. But it's our choice to decide if we're going to listen. So those are my points, y'all. That's my Bible study. And I really want y'all to walk away from this and ask like, God, what is my one thing? What is the one thing you want me to focus on in this season? And for some of y'all, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's the one thing. He's like, have a relationship with me. And scripture says it's really easy. It says, if you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus and believe in your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Boom, easy. Now understand, and I talked with somebody else. I will, Britt. Make sure you understand, y'all. And I talked with my, my mentee earlier. She said, we need to understand that saving like being in a relationship with God is not an insurance plan in terms of it keeping you from things he covers you but you still you still make wreck your car but you have you covered in the blood of Jesus right that's the kind of insurance policy you have but it doesn't mean oh I'm a Christian so nothing's gonna happen to me no it means that when things happen to you you can get through them because God's with you in the midst of those things so that is first and foremost if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ Admit, believe, confess, bam, just like that relationship, which is amazing, right? Love that. If you have a relationship with Jesus, if you have a relationship with Jesus, what is he telling you to do right now? What's the one thing? Because he's telling you to do something and you might be running from it, but guess what? He's going to keep hitting you with that same thing until you do it. And I will tell y'all, as somebody who's been on the inside of God's will and on the outside of God's will, I would rather be on the inside of God's will looking foolish to everybody else and be like, well, me and God know what we got going on, so don't worry about us. Then look like I have a bunch of things going on and God's back there shaking his head like, that wasn't the one thing. So Instagram is telling me I'm about to run out of time because y'all know I can go the full hour. I can go beyond the hour. But I really want y'all to meditate on that. What is your one thing? What would it look like if you focused your time and attention during this quarantine on that one thing? How would your life, how would your life look different if you were able to finish it? And then how might it free up your creativity so that when this thing comes, you can do something else in the future? So I really hope y'all enjoyed this Bible study. I will save it. I will share the notes. I, maybe I'll post the but post the notes on our blog. I, I might do that if that's something y'all are interested in. I'm going to pray probably the shortest prayer I've ever prayed. Because y'all know I, I'm long-winded when it comes to talking to Jesus. Because I need to hear from him. Okay? Um, but thank y'all so much. I love y'all so much. It feels so good to be back on our Bible studies. It's been a minute. But we out here. We here. We going to be back next week. We doing it because we got time. Okay? Okay. Bye.
Father God, thank you, Lord. You are so marvelous and wonderful. Thank you for everyone who is participating in this Bible study, Lord. Thank you for people's interaction, Lord. Thank you for the things that you told them. I can't believe it's been an hour already. You know I love spending time with you, and I love teaching your word, and I just thank you for reactivating this gift. I pray that this will reach the right people, Lord God, at the right time in this season. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, y'all, I love you so much.